All right, everybody. I have one o'clock on my computer and I'm going to trust that is accurate. Um, um, hello, my, I don't remember what my name was, folks. Hello, welcome to the Rails board meeting. Today is Friday, April 24th, 2020. My name is Paul Mills and I am president of the Rails board of directors and I call this meeting to order at one o'clock. Um, at this point, Emily, would you be kind enough to call a roll? Sure. Dave Barry. Here. Sue Busenbark. Michael Campbell. Here. Hallie Cox. Here. Gwen Gregory. Gwen, I know you're there. Let's say here. here you're muted. Here. Sorry. Percy Harris. Diane Hollister. Diane? Here. Here. Can you hear me? I got you now. Sarah McCone Chase. Here. Paul Mills. Here. Jenna Namek Luise. Here. Scott Poynton. Here. D. Runnels. Nadia Shake. Here. Thomas Stagg. Here. D. Runnels, you're not on? Okay, we have a quorum. Thank you, Emily. Um, a few uh, housekeeping things since we're doing our first full Zoom meeting as a Rails board. Um, when speaking, especially when you're making a motion, please state your name so that we all know who's speaking and we know who's making the motion and so we'll have an accurate recording. Um, we are gonna do guest introductions a little differently. Um, Emily will read the names of the guests who are participating um, via Zoom. Folks, after Emily finishes speaking, um, if Emily has not read your name, um, please state your name and your affiliation, or you can put it in the chat um, just so she can read it and um, add it to um, the minutes. Emily? You're muted, Emily. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> yes, we are. Myself, Emily Feister Rails, Brian Hebel Rails, Ann Slaughter Rails, Monica Harris Rails, Stacey Palmasano Rails, Deirdre Brennan Rails, Jim Krieger Rails, Joe Philippek Rails, Mary, Mary Witt Rails, Mark Hatch Rails. And I believe that is it. Did I miss anyone? Doesn't, doesn't sound like it, so thank you, Emily. Um, we are also gonna be handling um, public comments um, via Zoom. Um, Emily, did you receive any public comments via email in advance? I did not. Okay. Um, does anyone have any public comments at this time? Any, any public comments? No? Okay. Sounds like we don't. So we'll move on to adoption of the agenda. Um, may I have a motion and a second for adoption of the agenda as presented? Make the motion, Nadia. Thank you, Nadia. Second. Sarah McCone Chase. Sarah, thank you, second. Um, any further discussion about the agenda as presented? If not, Emily, would you do a, well, I think just because we are doing this via Zoom, why don't we do a roll call vote? So if you do a roll call vote for that motion, please. Sure. Dave Berry? Yes. I, I'm just gonna call everybody in case they are joining whenever. <laughs> Sue Busenbark? Michael Campbell? Yes. Hallie Berry? Cox? Hallie Cox? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Hallie Berry, though. <laughs> you know what? That's how I know how to pronounce your name. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first, and you won't Hallie, be the last. <laughs> so Hallie Berry is not here, but Hallie Cox is. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so, Gwen Gregory. Yes. 
Percy Harris. Diane Hollister. Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jenna Namek Luisi. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yes. Dee Reynolds. No, she's just, wait, hold on. I'm just letting her join. Okay. There she is, Dee Reynolds. I'm going to go to Nadia Shake. Yep. Thomas Bass. Yes. yes. Hi. Okay. You're in. Yeah. Great. All set. All right. Thank you, Emily. Um, the next items we have are the approval of the Rails board minutes, the financial reports, and expenditures. Um, first, we have the Rails board minutes of February 21st, 2020, which was a long time ago in a, in a different world, too, as far as that goes. So with that, may I have a motion for approval of the minutes of February 21st, 2020 Rails board meeting? So moved. David. Very so, oh, Scott, so while Scott okay. made the motion, I think I heard Dave Barry for a second. Um, any changes, additions, or corrections to the minutes as submitted? If not, um, Emily, again, can I have a roll call vote for this, please? Sure. Dave Barry. Yes. Sue Busenbark. Michael Campbell. Yes. Ellie Cox. Yes. Gwen Gregory. Yes. Percy Harris. Diane Hollister. Diane Hollister? Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jenna Namek Luisi. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yes. D. Reynolds. Uh, abstain. Nadia Shake. Yeah. Thomas Stagg. Yes. All right. Thank you all. Um, we're now moving on to the Rails Financial Report, and that will be Mr. Jim Krieger. Do we still have Jim? Jim. Well, Jim looks like you're muted, sir. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> she. Okay. Uh, I see that the uh, reports are for February. Agenda items are February and March, so I'll do February first. Um, I won't highlight too much uh, of that because many of the things in February also were true through March. Uh, the main. Just pulled out my earplugs. Um, <clears throat> The um, major event in February it was that uh, we we negotiated or the, we're a member of the Northern Illinois Municipal Electric Co Collaborative NIMEC and which conducts a bidding process for electrical supply which we use for our Burr Ridge facility. Um, they did this in early March and we ended up with a contract offer for one, two or three year periods. Uh, we accepted and signed a three year supply contract which begins on May 7th at a price of uh, just under five cents per kilowatt. And this price is 13.1% below the price of our existing three year contract. And we should have annual savings of approximately $4,200 a year. Uh, from locking in this lower price. Uh, so that was the good news of the month. And uh, are there any questions on the February report? Before I move on to the expenditures. Okay, hearing none. The expenditures uh, are listed at the, at the end of the report and for the month of February were $793,045.24. Do I have any questions on the detail?
Any questions for Jim? If not, may I have a motion for approval of the check voucher register for February 2020? So moved. This is Jenna. Thank you, Jenna. I'll second. This is Hallie. Hallie, thank you. There's our second. Any further discussion about the February 2020 check voucher register? If not, Emily, may I have a roll call vote, please? Sure. Dave Berry? Yes. Sue Busenbark? Is trying to get on and cannot. Michael Campbell? Yes. Ellie Cox? Yes. Gwen Gregory? Yes. Percy Harris? Diane Hollister? Yes. Sarah McCone Chase? Yes. Paul Mills? Yes. Jenna Namek Yes. Yes. Scott Poynton? Yes. D. Runnels? Yes. Nadia Sheikh? Nadia Shake. Yes. And Thomas Stagg. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And I will move on to the March report. I'll say more about this one. Um, Excuse me, Sue Busenbark, you just joined? I did. Can you hear me? We sure can. Okay. I'm okay. here. Thank you. Sorry, Jim, go ahead. No problem. Um, our March um, unassigned general fund cash uh, was 16.1 million at the end of the month, and that would fund an estimated 17.1 months of operations. Um, at the middle of March, on March 17th, we suspended, we temporarily suspended all delivery operations, and we closed our our uh, locations due to the pandemic, of course. Our administrative uh, employees are working from home. Uh, and I said until at least the end of April, now it looks like the end of May, and delivery people are currently being paid. Um, our general fund revenues through March uh, went uh, below budget uh, for the first time in quite a while, 851,000, as we haven't uh, received any uh, APC area and per capita grant payments since January 9th. Uh, the timing of our remaining uh, future uh, fiscal year 2020 payments, which is over 6.4 million, is, has always been somewhat uncertain, but it's particularly now uncertain in, in uh, light of the additional financial stress the state is uh, uh, experiencing because of the pandemic. Um, in, investment income is now uh, 30, um, it's uh, unfavorable to budget. And uh, it, for example, in July, our investment income was 38,000, but by March it declined to 20,611 because the interest rates have declined from nearly two and a half percent at the first of the year to now just over 1%. Um, our expenditure items are uh, expenditures are 761,533 below budget uh, due to the normal uh, uh, variances that we've been experiencing for quite a while. The contractual services, the uh, personnel, library materials, and um, and uh, a number of other categories, about six uh, categories of those. Uh, through the rest of the year, we can really look for uh, the um, travel expenses becoming much more favorable to budget and fuel expenses. Um, the fuel expenses, I believe, were about 15,000 under budget uh, through February. And then uh, when we paid the March bill, it had declined by about half. It had gone from about 20,000 to 10,000 in March because half of the uh, month we suspended operations. And uh, in April, the fuel bill will be virtually zero. Um, we, uh, we've been active in the special revenue funds. The Census 2020 uh, program has continued. We spent $119,000 on that through March. And the L2 replacement project is, uh, is continuing. Uh, we spent $85,000 on that. And uh, finally, um, per our fiscal accountability 
uh, policy. Um, since Sikich had uh, has been our auditing firm uh, actually since inception of Rails and and for uh, um, several of the um, former um, um, library systems before that, uh, they've been our Sikich has been our auditor and they've completed the uh, latest five year um, uh, proposal that uh, we had accepted and. Um, our fiscal accountability policy requires that we go out for bid and and uh, just kind of check the market. Uh, we did that uh, in uh, late February and March, and we received four proposals, um, all from very good auditing firms: uh, Sikich, Lauterbach, and Amen, Baker and Tilly, and Selden Fox. Uh, we went through an evaluation process. Uh, first of their uh, uh, credentials. And, uh, and then we looked at the prices and uh, we, are, we are recommending uh, that we um, switch our auditing firm to Lauterbach and Amen, which came in with a very, very competitive bid. Uh, uh, not quite the lowest, but right down there. But they also do uh, already, they uh, audit over 45 libraries and they have a very, uh, uh, they've become very uh, dominant uh, in governmental uh, accounting and auditing libraries. And uh, they uh, submitted a very competitive proposal, which is about around 3,000 a year lower than what Sikich proposed, even though Sikich actually lowered its price from, uh, from what we were charged last year. Uh, but uh, we have worked with uh, Lauterbach on the uh, SWAN and Prairie Cat accounts already, and I have had experience working with them with Limerick, and uh, uh, it's been very positive. So we think they're a very competent firm. Uh, Sickage actually did score the highest, um, and they are a they are a great firm, and we've enjoyed working with them. But uh, um, with the lower price that Lauterbach can offer, and very good quality. Uh, we think it's uh, time to do an auditor rotation. So we would, uh, we're proposing to go ahead with that. Do you have any comments on that? And our audit uh, starting date will be just around the corner. They'll probably uh, be out first in, noon to, uh, in uh, June to do preliminary work. So do I have any questions on the uh, report before we move on to expenditures? Not so much about the, the report, about when do you want a motion uh, to approve the new auditors, Jim? Well, we didn't really uh, have a, uh, a resolution or anything for that. It's uh, informational. I did want to get uh, if there were any objections, but uh, uh, it's just a, uh, informational type thing. Thank you. If that's okay. Yes. Okay. Jim, this is Jenna. I just want to say thank you so much for all of your work in, in vetting potential auditors and, and putting together all of that um, for us and, and for finding something that is um, really going to be workable for us moving forward. So I appreciate all of your work on that. Thank you. And we our uh, our review team consisted of uh, two of my accountants and myself, and Monica was part of it. We had we did have somebody outside of finance uh, take a look at the proposals also, but we all reached the same conclusion. Okay, um, moving on uh, to the expenditures for the month of March which are contained towards the back of the report. The expenditures were $781,061.12. Do I have any questions on the detail? Any questions for Jim? If not, may I have a motion for approval of the check voucher register for March, 2020? So moved, this is Scott. Thank you, Scott. This is Diane. This is Jenna. Second. 
I think I heard Diane. I think I heard Diane first. So Diane, who was our second. So we have Scott made the motion and Diane seconded it. Any further discussion? If not, Emily, may I have a roll call vote, please? Sure. Dave Barry. Yes. Sue Busenbark. You have to unmute yourself to, to respond. Sue Busenbark. Yes. Michael Campbell. Yes. Kelly Cox. Yes. Gwen Gregory. Yes. Percy Harris. Diane Hollister. Yes. Sarah McCone Chase. Yes. Paul Mills. Yes. Jenna Nemec Luisi. Yes. Scott Poynton. Yes. D. Runnels. D. Runnels. D. Yes. Thank you. Nadia Shake. Yes. Thomas Stagg. Yes. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Thank you again, Jim, and thank you, Emily. Emily Emily's doing lots of roll call votes today. Uh, and of course, those reports, speaking of audit, will be filed for audit. All right, we're moving on to reports. Um, first, we have a report from the Rails president. Um, needless to say, this has been an extraordinary time for our Illinois libraries and for the state of Illinois. Um, I am you know, very proud to be an Illinois librarian. I'm very proud with what I think our library community has done to serve our communities virtually. Um, in my role as Rails Board President, I'm also very proud of the leadership and advocacy role that our regional library system has taken as we move through um, uncharted waters. So, and I thank you all for being a great board during this very, very difficult time. I think our support for rail staff and the work they're doing is just incalculable in making life better for the citizens of our state. So thank, thank you all. Um, we move on to our um, committee reports and we have advocacy committee. Michael, do you have a report from advocacy? I do, thank you, Paul. Um, the advocacy committee met this week and um, we met virtually just like everybody else. And um, so we had, um, we even had Percy who is joining us and his busy schedule who couldn't be with us today. Um, and um, uh, Sarah and Jenna and Tom, uh, Deidre, Mary, um, and the rest of the team joined us uh, virtually. Um, we did go through several things. Um, we had, uh, uh, the committee had submitted a program submission for ILA as well as for IELTS. Um, so we have uh, submitted a program for that for the fall, whatever format those conferences may take uh, via virtually or in person. Um, as well as uh, we had several other ideas about um, <laughs> ways that uh, we could encourage. Um, there's a trustee forum um, uh, uh, professional development uh, for trustees this next week um, that was uh, that was happening. I believe was going to happen in Oak Brook, but now is going to be happening uh, via webinar this next week. Um, and then um, one of the things that we uh, chatted a little bit about was our um, having something like a, a trusty virtual cocktail hour uh, via Zoom um, and uh, for people to uh, share ideas about, uh, you know, ways to, um, you know, things that were going on at their library during shutdown and things like that. So. Um, so those were some of the ideas that came up about ways that they could uh, share resources between school libraries and public libraries, especially during um, you know, the budget crisis that we all look forward that's going to be happening, um, things like that too. So it was a, a good meeting um, and uh, our next meeting is um, 
May 20th. Uh, again, uh, it looks like it's going to be virtual since we're still in shutdown mode during that time. Any questions? Well, thank, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, next up, we have the consortia committee, which happens to be me. Um, the consortia committee did meet um, earlier this week on Monday, April 20th. Um, relatively straightforward agenda. Um, we did have a conversation about what the consortia are doing um, during uh, during the, you know, this time of COVID-19. Um, good conversation about what the consortia are looking at doing, how they are collaborating within the consortia for figuring out, you know, how to make sure you know, things are going as well as they can while libraries are physically shut down and also planning for what the world will look like you know, once we figure out how, you know, our reopening of our physical spaces um, will be. Um, we also had a conversation, um, Ann Slaughter did a presentation on the FY22 um, LSAP support grant formula. Um, as I think we've had conversations in the past, Rails has been diligently working to make sure this is a data-driven and transparent, transparent formula for how um, Rails supports um, this very important resource sharing that goes on in our state. Um, lost my train of thought there. Did anyone have any questions about that? Anne, is there anything you would like to share about the formula at this time? Um, I'll just say that the formula will be um, included in the application that we send to those LSAPs for their fiscal 22 um, LSAP support grant. We typically send that May 1st, but we're delaying it this year and sending it June 15th. Um, and then uh, we'll keep you posted on the progress there, but their applications will be due on September 1st and we'll use the fall to determine what their awards will be. So that's, you'll see kind of the results of that in the fiscal 22 budget. We work pretty far ahead on this one. Thank you, Anne. Um, I should note we had a conversation, which was an important point that, you know, the, the, the LSAP grant funding is, of course, a, a, you know, as an ever-present conversation dependent upon what state funding. Um, you know, it's certainly um, going to be a different world for us going uh, for the next couple of years. So um, and I think everyone, particularly at the consortia committee, is, is cognizant of that. Um, moving on, um, unless there's any questions about consortia committee. Okay, moving on, we have the executive committee. The executive committee um, has not met, so that makes that easy. Um, Gwen, policy committee. The policy committee has not met. That makes that that makes that easy too. Um, next, we have the resource sharing committee, and that would be Deirdre. They have not met. <laughs> Sometimes these committee reports do go relatively straightforward. Um, Sue, um, Universal Service Committee. Sue, oh, there you go. Can You're you hear me? me? Yes, now we can hear okay. you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, we have not met, however, um, upon reading Dee's report, you'll see that the State Library has agreed to relax the rules um, related to non-resident cards during this crisis so that um, libraries have been offering temporary cards. Um, the only, and of course, there is um, quite a bit in the operational plan about universal service. Dee, do you have anything to offer or to? Uh, I don't think right now, you're absolutely right, Sue, though. The, uh, the State Library did relax the rules and uh, some, not many libraries are taking advantage of that. Um, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Sue. Um, all right, continue on reports. We're on to Rails reports and we have the Rails monthly report. Deirdre. Thank you, Paul. It's nice to see you all virtually. Um, you have my written report, of course. And um, as you can imagine, um, not only since I wrote that, 
have things changed, but since this meeting started, I think <laughs> things have even continued to evolve, shall we say. Um, let me just um, start by saying that um, we very much, the staff appreciates the support of the board um, and uh, we, we, we know we can count on you and um, I think that you know that, of course, we are here to support libraries. That's, that is our job. And um, this has definitely been um, quite a challenge this, this last, since March 16th was the last day that we were here, I mean, in our buildings. Um, I'm actually in the building today because I wanted to be sure I had a good internet connection. Um, so, uh, you know, in some ways I don't even know what to tell you beyond what I've written down. I can update you um, on a few things. Um, for example, um, we, d we have had three special member updates. I, don't, I, I think we um, invited all of you to them. The last one had 700 people in attendance. We actually had to increase our Zoom licenses in order to accommodate that many people. I, you know, libraries are libraries are so worried about um, their patrons, their users. All libraries, you know, not just public libraries, all different types of libraries. I'm I'm sure that you have stories at all your home libraries uh, about things that you want to do and are hoping that you could do soon for your patrons. Uh, you know, our role has been to try to provide guidance in terms of, of helping libraries to think about what they should do in terms of, you know, first it was about closing and how to close and for how long, then it was about staffing, um, then it became about, you, you, know, um, you know, questions about furloughs, unemployment, then it became um, about, uh, you know, curbside service and reopening plans and, you know, concerns about future funding. And um, so um, it is an ever changing um, situation. There's no doubt about it. Um, we, the, you know, the, the governor's order extending the stay at home uh, order, uh, you know, just, you know, brought up a whole bunch of other stuff. And just, and I did send you the opinion that our attorney gave us, Julie Tappendorf, that she did give us today, um, with the um, caveat that uh, she hasn't actually seen the official order. She's seen the pre-filing, I guess, but it's important to, you know, as she said to me, it's not good lawyering to be opining on something that you haven't read yet. Makes sense to me. Um, <laughs> But um, but she did tell us that you know remind us and I actually I think uh, it was a good it was a good reminder you know libraries are not closed this is from Julie because we're not essential we're you know in most cases in all cases I guess we're closed because boards chose to close libraries it was not it's not a we're not a business we're a government entity. So very important to keep that distinction in mind when you read the governor's order, um, the pre-filing, there is actually a, a, a specific Q and A in, the, in the, the order that does exactly lay that out, that libraries are governmental entities and it is up to the entity to determine what service is essential. So I, you know, I guess it's that the good, the, you know, the, the uh, challenge there is it, you know, puts the decision right back on the library, um, which, I mean, that's the whole point, of course, local control and being responsive to community needs. And, but I think that's, the, that's sort of the, uh, the news of the day, um, you know, related to the extension of the order is to um, don't think of, it's not, it's not about the libraries being a business, it's about uh, it's about keeping people safe and keeping, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, keeping people safe. That's what it comes down to. 
um, for all of us, of course. Now, related to that is um, back at the end of March, I did reach out to some contacts of mine, and I, I think I put this in my report, and I think I sent you a press release from the Institute for Museum and Library Services. There is a working group. Uh, the steering committee had their first meeting this morning, and um, there's about 12 of us or something on the steering committee, and it's from all, it's from the library world, the museum world, all different types of libraries, um, even, you know, some, uh, the, uh, the Secretary General from IFLA, because of course this is a global issue, and they have put together a team um, that uh, a Battelle, which is B-A-T-T-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, is working on, um, and what IMLS's goal is, is authoritative fact-based science on uh, making sure that materials are clean and safe for people to use so that we can safely assure our libraries and our users that they can, you know, come back into our buildings or, or use our materials through curbside, um, uh, you know, be in our spaces because the, 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 the difference in our industry is that it isn't a case of like going and picking up food at a restaurant and then you bring it home and you're done. It's a case of, you know, you pick up the book and then you bring the book back and where has the book been and it needs to be cleaned and how do you clean it and what kind of equipment do you need to protect your staff while they're cleaning it? You get the picture, I think. It's, uh, it's the wonderful nature of our business is that we don't throw things away after they're used once. <laughs> we recirculate them, we reuse them, we share them. But in this kind of a situation, that's an added uh, complexity, I guess. So um, uh, let's see, what else should I tell you? There, you'll, if you look at the Rails monthly report, um, you will see that there ha has been, especially the part about uh, preparing libraries for the future, an enormous amount of, um, of webinars and you know virtual training and meetings and just incredible amount of stuff that's uh, being uh, information and you know the ability to connect that's being offered to our members and I think they've been very appreciative. The website that the team put together on the the Pulse page on the COVID nineteen the pandemic is is really unbelievable. It's got so much stuff there, uh, uh, Mary and. Stacy and Monica have been the, the, the go-to people on that, and they just posted today this fantastic document about uh, guidelines for curbside service. And it's really, um, what I like most about it is that it, um, it doesn't try to say that these are answers, because nobody really has any answers about much yet, but it, 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 it gives libraries the questions that they need to be asking themselves to be sure that they're keeping their users and their staff and their, uh, you know, safe and that their materials are clean. So I definitely direct you to look at that. And there's more coming this month. I know that uh, Joe already has some, uh, some uh, training in the works with um, HR source related to um, staffing and reopening. Um, and, um, what, let's see, um, does anybody have any particular questions while I rack my brains for something that I should tell you that I've forgotten to tell you? Well, I do have a question. Um, since ILA's receiving ILA's e-blast this week, um, concerning the Moline Public Library, furloughs um have there been any other libraries cons considering furloughs or is this just a singular occurrence i mean i don't know if i'm just a little out of the loop and haven't heard of any upcoming um potential furloughs or is this the only one um well i will start off by saying a couple things about that number one there's conversation out there about furloughs and layoffs, I, we know of anecdotally, we do, we do not have any scientific information. I believe that River Grove Public Library, and you know, please 
colleagues help me out with this. I believe River Grove also laid or, or furloughed their staff. Um, any, who else? I know there's, oh, not Quincy, no. Anybody remember? Dear to, this is, uh, dear to this is Scott, I was going to say the only one I remember from the director's list here was River Grove. Okay. Oh yeah, Mount Prospect, of course, a big library, yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah, Mount, yeah. And Quincy did as well. Okay, that's right, they did, yep. Um, I also, and so we're not, we haven't tracked it. It's, you know, it's, I mean, we're trying to keep up with it. Um, but I, I should also tell you um, that Dee Ruddles is on the board of Moline, of the Moline Public Library. She's on our call. Um, I did have a conversation with her and Brian just the other day. I don't know, Dee, if you want to provide any updates or any insight. Um, I think you, I know you got a lot of community support and, and, and collegial support as you guys were trying to deal with all this. Actually, um, and next week, um, we've got two special board meetings set. Um, we did not have, as a library board, much time for any kind of investigation, response, whatever. We had a special board meeting on Tuesday. Um, we're not most of us were not aware that at the prior city council meeting, um, the decision had been made to cut the $414,000 um, from our budget um, that would have come from the city's general fund uh, because the city's looking at a $10 million shortfall. Um, and they determined that we would be a good source for $414,000. And um, as that was virtually, I mean, that pretty much took out our um, employees. I mean, our budget was down to books, buildings, and um, books, building, and um, bodies in the, in the library. And uh, we didn't have another dime to, to share. Um, so all that's being offered in Moline here now is um, patrons access to, you know, books online and, and, and that kind of thing. Prior to that, we had been doing inventory and um, had um, book group discussions and helped kids with their homework and helped people with tax returns. And I mean, we, we had staff there to assist the public. Um, but as of Wednesday, um, all of our union workers um, were laid off. And as of today, our exempt employees um, are on their last day. Um, and the only person we have left is Brian Lear, our, our director. Um, and that's not a situation that we can have continue. So. Next week is going to be a big investigation for us as to how far, um, what we can do to rectify this situation. Because it certainly looks like Moline thinks that it is not going to be in a position to help us, um, which they have traditionally done, you know, every year. Um, this, so, um, if we lived with what Moline has decided, our library wouldn't be open. Um, or our librarians would not be there to help people and that obviously can't continue. Um, I, um, so I will have more to report. I, I just, um, I hadn't had a chance to go to the uh, Rails um, website to see, but, um, a number of us are going to study every suggestion that Rails has for us, and I think it's going to be one of our pri our primary resource um, as we make our way through this. But um, if I have anything to do with it, and I, there is not a way in the world that the situation here in Moline is going to continue um, much past April 30th. I, I am 
dedicated to the fact that we are going to move forward to um, offering more services and it, it we have to be offer more than what the city is allowing us to do here. Um, I did have a question. When do you think that report is going to be done on when it's going to be safe to hand out books curbside, D? Well, D. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I'm, I'm willing to be called the other D now. The other D, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I am hoping within weeks. I, I mean, you know, they just, we just had our first meeting today. Um, that's my hope that, you know, there, but obviously have to be, there's a lot of things, a lot of pieces to look at, a lot of different kinds of materials, a lot of different kinds of equipment, things that our libraries use to handle materials. So we, we, we you know, we gotta be sure that they get it right. You know, so that as, you know, somebody said to me at another meeting the other day, we have to be able to look our patrons in the eye and assure them that they are, it, that our materials are okay to use. So, it'll take as long as it takes, I guess. We just have to hope that they do it as fast as they can. Well, th this thing that's happened in here, here in Moline, pretty much just pulled the rug out from under all of us. Mm -hmm. um, and so now we're going to have to, we're getting together to recoup and figure out what we're going to do. But there's no way that we can have just Brian be in the library to of course do not. things. Well, what you'll find on the website is the aggregated wisdom of libraries across Illinois and the amazing things that they're doing to serve their patrons. And this is under COVID-19 on the yes. homepage. Yes. Okay, okay. I did have one other question yep. and I was, I was muted before on these temporary cards. Yes. Does, does that mean that we can, um, for example, issue cards to the Rock Island Arsenal? Um, they're not residents of the city of Moline. Um, and then we have pockets here of are they, people are, in Moline. Are they not residents of anywhere else? Or I don't think not so. Served? Yeah. Then, then I would say yes. And the, and the pockets in Moline of people who are not Moline residents because they wanted to get out of water bills and that kind of thing, um, we could issue cards to them too for as long as this lasts. Yes. Because otherwise I think we charge like $140, $142 per year per person which could be expensive for a family. Right. I, I, my understanding is that it just has to be a temporary card. You have to put an end date on it. And that's good. I mean, we can start doing that next week. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, so moving along then, I did just a few other things, um, just to be sure that you, um, you do uh, understand all the things that everybody's been doing. We've been doing surveys to find out about virtual services that libraries are offering so that we can then share that out, like with Moline. Um, coordinating libraries uh, uh, 3D printing efforts to help the, the healthcare field. Some libraries are uh, got together the uh, makerspace networking group and worked with Amita Health out of Hinsdale um, to do that. Um, let's see, uh, a list and map of libraries that are closed, uh, various uh, round tables and online water cooler events to help libraries, uh, you know, connect with each other. I mean, some of this, as you, I'm sure you know very well, is um, just kind of a need for uh, socialness too. It's very, uh, it's not, not always good to be by yourself all the time. You need to talk to somebody else to, you know, get your brain going. Um, and, um, I do want to say finally, I guess, that the staff has been incredible. People have been working so hard. 
so much as a team. I just cannot um, emphasize that enough. So I want to I want to publicly thank them here. Thank you, staff everywhere. All real staff have been awesome. And Emily is asking me a question, and I don't know what it means. Did I say the wrong thing, Emily, about an expiration date? What did I? Is that what you're asking me about the temporary cards? No, you did not. I just wanted you to say that. And you. Said oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Just thinking alike. All right, as always. Okay. So happy to answer any questions or talk about, you know, anything you guys want to talk about related to your libraries or anything that you're wondering about. Nice bird in the background, whoever had that. <laughs> I hope everyone's doing well. This is, this is, this is, this is a very challenging experience for everyone. Um, and I hope you are taking care of yourselves too. I mean, we need to take care of, you must taking care of others. I don't think we would be in this profession if we didn't care so much for others, but mm -hmm. take care of yourself too. Any, any other questions for Deirdre about her report? Oh, I should add, um, we did include the consortial reports in the packet. Um, we do that after their quarterly meeting. And I, I think, you know, of particular interest now because of what's all the ways that they're having to deal with this. It's just, you know, you've got the local library level, you have the consortial level, and you have the system level. So. Um, That's there for your reading pleasure. Can I make a comment about the consortial report, something in there to yes. let everyone know about? So just to, you, you'll notice that the Carly has their report in there. And Carly is, while not only dealing with pretty much every college and university having to change all their classes to be online in the middle of the semester, uh, Carly is still going ahead with the migration of all the iShare libraries to from Voyager to Alma right now. So that is causing a lot of upheaval, still more upheaval in academic libraries and more challenges. For example, at our library, we had to do our fiscal year close this week instead of, you know, July 1st because of the migration. So that meant that basically we are not really able to buy anything until July. So to support any online learning and things like that, we really Oops. can't buy anything. Um, so we're, that is something that academic libraries are dealing with right now in addition to all the challenges of changing to online learning and budget challenges caused by the fact that most colleges and universities had to do things like refund students' money for housing or lose other sorts of funding that they had, like any kind of summer events, stuff like that. So colleges and universities are having some serious issues right now. Yes, indeed. Any other questions about either the, the Rails monthly report or the consortia, uh, the quarterly consortia reports, I should say. If not, I think we can move on to new business. Um, 8.1, the system area and per capita grant application operational plan. And that'll be Deirdre and Mary Whit giving a report. That is a long title, but please go ahead. Sure. Um, well, it's a long title for a long document, right? <laughs> um, so every year, um, and um, I, I should, I will pause to say, Paul, Greg did let me know that they would not be at the meeting. I don't know if he let you know as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, he and Karen Egan decided they had to choose between coming to the board meeting and going to a webinar on uh, reopening libraries and so they decided that maybe they should do that sure. so sounds good I told them I didn't understand why he had to pick you know go that way but whatever. So, 
So anyway, um, every year at this time, we put together our budget and our plan of service. And um, uh, as I think you all know, because you, I think you were all here last year, um, the, um, you know, the, the State Library gives us numbers and they give us uh, guidelines on what to do. And, you know, it's very much based on what we've been doing, obviously, because um, it's about following the System Act and supporting resource sharing and training and interlibrary loan and professional de uh, development and, you know, communicating what we do and, of course, delivery. So this year is is no different in terms of the um, kinds of things that we would that we have in our uh, operational plan um, outline, and it is of course very much aligned with our strategic plan as it is every year. Of course, the oddity is that we're doing in the, this in the midst of this completely mind blowing, unprecedented event, or you know, you know, not just an event, this experience. And really have have um, no you know unable to predict what our funding will be um, going forward as everybody is unable to predict that whether you're in government or private um, sector um, so you know nevertheless um, that doesn't mean we don't stick to our plan um, and that when we find out what our funding is then we ad ad adapt accordingly as we have in the past when there was a budget crisis and we didn't get any, you know, most of our money for two years. So it isn't like we haven't experienced that before. Um, so um, we will just be agile as we always are when we do find out what it, what it is that we will be dealing with budget wise. Um, so I did write a memo that oversee that over gives you an overview. Um, uh, you know, as I this really these are high these are some of the highlights just to draw your attention. You know, particularly to possible new things. Um, uh, goal one is about resource sharing. You already heard that about the, the funding formula from Ann and Paul for the um, LSAP support will change in FY22. And in FY21, the LSAPs will be applying for that money. There will also be changes in the administrative rules in FY21 starting in January um, that will be uh, where libraries will be required to have a plan for how they're gonna make their, their holdings available via a shared uh, database. Uh, as I told you at a previous meeting, we're going to look at our e-read uh, vendor, uh, Baker and Taylor, and see if we need to make any changes. Um, let's see. Um, uh, goal two is about telling the library story, which this is going to be even more important, obviously. I mean, a lot of the work that we've been doing that I didn't uh, specifically mention before has been a, is about advocacy for libraries. I mean, it's difficult when you're being told that you're not essential, or even when you're telling yourselves that you're not essential. Um, you have to be careful to not, I mean, obviously we're not healthcare workers, but that doesn't mean we're not an essential service, you know, in a, a for a community. I think all you know that and D, just spoke very eloquently about her feelings about about that for Moline. Um, so that's going to be even more of a of an of an important role for us, as is um, helping libraries um, be the best that they can be. I've had it in my mind for a year or so now that we want libraries to start uh, all having a strategic plan, and I think that um, you know something like that might help libraries in the future deal with this kind of a, an emergency uh, if, uh, you know, hoping that nothing like this ever happens again. Um, as Sue uh, Busenbark mentioned earlier, yes, there's a lot in here about expanding service uh, to the unserved, which with the advice of our board committee and in collaboration with ILA. And um, we are uh, beginning our, as we've talked before, we have uh, we think we have 
um, identified a, uh, someone to work with us on equity, diversity, and inclusion work for staff and member libraries. First for staff to build a, you know, a culture um, in Rails that um, that is uh, accepting and you know reassuring that people are all included and that you know things are equitable and that we hopefully are a diverse staff as well. So that's not everything, but I think it's the it's the high you know the high points the the, the big bullets I guess and I'm but I'm happy to answer any questions about any of it and there's a lot of detail in the document. Any any questions for Deirdre? You're probably wondering too about next steps. The um, I'll just say this now while you think the um, so the application is actually voluminous. Um, this document is just a small part of it. We also have obviously we have a budget which we're we're working on right now. Um, but we also have a lot of um, other. Uh, supporting documentation that we have to send to the state library, including, uh, you know, uh, employees, the you know, list of employees, the policy manual, uh, vehicles, and you know, age and mileage. Um, I'm sure there's more, but I'm blanking out. But you you get the general idea. It's a it's a, it's kind of like a state of the system kind of a application. On that note, it also include, includes the statement of economic interest for everyone. Right. Yep. So that's a good reminder to everyone who has not <laughs> had that, who's not completed it, to please complete it. I will send a reminder email, and I need copies because we do submit that with this document. Very clever, Emily. <laughs> Always a good reminder. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, if we have no questions for Deirdre, I think, thank Deirdre, I thank Mary, I thank the rail staff for putting together what is an impressive document, which must be done. So we will ask you to vote next month, I think, unless the state extends the deadline for some reason or, you know, things change, which God knows things are changing on a hourly basis. Yes. That, that sounds good. Our next new business item actually is the executive director evaluation. Um, I had a conversation with uh, Gwen, who is, as you may, is our uh, board vice president, and you may recall last year, um, I think it was the first time last year, we actually did the executive director evaluation via SurveyMonkey, and that seemed to work really well. Um, having you know, an online portal to complete it certainly makes compiling the information easier, and I think that's a, uh, just in general easier than working with an MS Word or a, an Adobe document. So um, with that, we have a timeline for the executive director evaluation. Um, the survey link to SurveyMonkey will be sent out after uh, today's meeting, and today is April 24th, because I know sometimes the calendar can be a little amorphous when we're in the, in the situation we're in right now. Um, we have a dead, uh, deadline to complete the evaluation of Friday, May 8th, so it, that's two weeks to complete the evaluation process. Um, we would then anticipate the results of the survey would be shared with the full board and the executive director on Monday, May 11th. And then on Friday, May 22nd, which is the, the uh, date for the next Rails board meeting, we would actually have an executive session to discuss the evaluation. Um, timelines designed to give us, you know, two weeks to complete the evaluation um, and then uh, roughly a little bit less than two weeks from the time the results are sent to everyone till our next board meeting. Um, I think this type of timeline gives folks plenty of time to complete the evaluation. Um, it also, once the evaluation is complete and the results are distributed, it gives the full board and also the executive director time to review and uh, reflect upon the results so that we can have a good conversation during the executive session on May 22nd. Gwen, anything you'd like to add to that, ma'am? No, I think that uh, it did work very well last year, so um, it seemed to go more smoothly than in previous years, so it was much easier to 
compile the information so it was made the timeline shorter. I mean, it made it easier to get it all done within that time frame. Thanks to Jody Rubel for her help too on, on creating it. So yes, think, I don't think I don't know if Jody's here, but yes, please do extend our thanks to Jody because I don't think I saw her on the list. So. So if that sounds good, um, after the meeting, um, the link will go out and we will um, you know, complete that important um, task that we do have as a board, perhaps one of the most important tasks that we have. Well, with that, folks, we are down to agenda building for the next Rails board meeting, which will be held Friday, May 22nd at 1 p.m. I think based on what we've, uh, what we've learned, it will be another Zoom board meeting. So does anyone have anything um, that they would like to have on the agenda for next month? No, doesn't doesn't sound like we have anything. So I know well, we will, you know. We will prepare a good, a good agenda for May, and we certainly know that the executive director evaluation will be on that agenda as we discussed. Um, does anyone have any other business during before the Rails Board of Directors? Um, if not, in closing, um, I would like to say, particularly you know, to, to Dee Runnels, you know. Um, you know you are fighting the good fight. You are doing what needs to be done. And if you know any of us can help you, I'm sure we would be happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, folks. Well, please, everyone take care of yourselves as you continue to take care of others and continue to take care of the citizens of our state. Um, I look forward to seeing you all soon. And with that, I will declare this meeting adjourned at 2.07 p.m. Thank you all. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Goodbye. Stay safe. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Yeah, so long. Bye. -bye.